today we're going to talk about how to convert images for 3D printing. Now the first thing you have to understand is different image types. The most common are JPEGs and PNGs. Now the problem with these is that they're defined by a bunch of little pixels. Essentially you have so many pixels wide and so many pixels across, and each pixel is defined in a different color to make your image. 3D printing though isn't defined by pixels. So in order to convert an image like this, we have to change those pixels into lines and points. You might be familiar with STLs, which are meshes, which is essentially a bunch of 3D lines and points, but what we're gonna do is convert our PNG image into an SVG. SVG stands for Scalar Vector Graphic, I think. An SVG image is defined by a bunch of points and lines, similar to a mesh, except it's only 2D. The advantage of vector graphics is since your image is defined by lines and point, you can just keep zooming in and it'll never get blurry. What I'm going to show you today is how to convert your PNG image into a SVG, which will then let us easily convert into an STL for 3D printing. All the programs I'm going to use today are free, and I'll make sure to link them below. For our first step, we're going to go ahead and save this PNG image of a D20 because I like D20s and bring it into Inkscape. Next I'm going to right click on it and go trace bitmap. What this is going to do is draw lines based on what the colors are. This image is going to be really easy to trace because it's just black and white. I'm going to go by colors, live preview. See, try it out. We have eight scans. As we can see now we have two images. One is the original PNG and one is the trace. So I actually right click and ungroup. What I'll get is all the different traces. You can see got a bunch of them. Um, so I'm just gonna pick the best looking one. I think I like this one the best. So we're gonna go with that trace. And if we look we can see this is just a bunch of points that have been defined as an SVG. So let's go delete this out. Let's take this and save this as an SVG. Now I'm going to show you two ways you can use your SVG to make a 3D print. The first is Tinkercad. If you haven't used Tinkercad before, it's super duper easy. I'm going to go import. I'm going to go ahead and use art because I don't care about the whole art board and import. And voila, we have our 3D model of our image now. Let's go ahead and join this and then export. And then we can go ahead and print it. This is a good method if you have text or a black and white logo. Um, but you might be saying, what if I don't have something black and white? Well, we'll get to that. So let's take this image of a mud kip, something a little more complex and try it out. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Right click. Let's do it. And as we can see here, we have two again. Let's go ahead and ungroup. And we can see each color is its own separate layer, which is actually pretty cool. But I'm gonna go ahead and just go with the black here. I'm gonna go ahead and size this down. It was really big last time. And again, if we look at this, just a bunch of points and a bunch of lines. In Fusion 360, if you go insert SVG, we have our good Mudkip friend. What it actually does in Fusion 360 is it takes the SVG and inserts it as a line drawing. So from here you can extrude and do all that sort of fancy stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and just extrude, what should I extrude? Doing it in Fusion 360 gives you a little bit more control of what kind of you can set the layer heights to and what you want to do. So here we have our model. Look at him. He looks, he looks pretty cute. So that took me a total of about five minutes to model a mod kip, which is pretty cool. Obviously there's some limitations. The more complex an image is, the harder it's going to be to trace it with a bitmap tracer. So let's try and print these and see how they turn out. Pretty, pretty cool. So I printed them all out. 
the dice one put it out pretty well, as you can see. But the mud kip had some problems. Um, and I think the issue is that in Cura, if you have your lines too thin, the slicer kind of just ignores them because it's too much detail for it to handle. So what I did is it went back into the SVG and in Inkscape, outset all the lines, and then reprinted it, and I got this, which I am pretty happy with. There's an easy way to convert flat images into STLs. 